Cheryl said, I think I passed anxiety a while ago. Rose, very anxious when listening to the news. Energized, Naomi. Family, Lori. Anxiety, sadness about loss of job, Kirsten. Mm. Work-related anxiety, Lisa. Beginning of school year as an educator in this online world. Yeah, just recognizing that. The challenges and the stresses coming from that, from Holly. Capri, fear. Terrified about outcome of election, Mayada. Wells, anxious about getting COVID and the election. Tired of it all, Stephanie in Naples. Exhausted from work, fearful about election results. Um, tired of being anxious, Cassie. Anxiety, but taking this time as I reconnect with myself. Saddened, Geraldine. Fear of four more years, no. Incline the mind in a different direction. Anxious about life in general, Michael. Vicky, privileged, Michael. Yeah, worried, hopeful. Hopeful the real silent majority is out there and will vote. Debbie, I'm already checking 538 polling results two or three times a day, <laughs> definitely not healthy. Good that you notice that and you can make a choice. Leslie. Christine, I feel I've gotten used to being home so much. Emily, I feel the anxiety in my throat. I want to speak wisely, but my emotions sometimes are overwhelming. Jim, craving clarity. Diane, relationship strain. We're just holding all of this in, in, with loving kindness. Linnea, illness undiagnosed by CT scan accepting what it is, what happened when the body gets old. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for sharing and, and just for yourself holding what's present for you and holding what's present for all of us, you know, in these times. Um, you know, I, I often come back to, to remind myself and to remind us that one of the great gifts <coughs> in these times and in any time that we're feeling challenged, um, you know, anxious, fearful, is that we're not alone. You know, the mind goes to that, you know, I'm alone, I'm feeling this on my own. But the more that we can connect with others and recognize that there's really a shared experience we're going through. And obviously we have our own individual, personal, you know, expression of it. But much of what we're experiencing is what others are experiencing, those who shared fear and anxiety around the political situation. You know, know that you're one of tens of millions and not just people on one side of the political divide, but, you know, people generally. Um, and those fears come from different, the fear, we may be fearing different things, wanting different things. Um, but just to, to recognize that and that, that, can, that can be a, a quality, that can be something that we can cultivate, that, that we can remind ourselves of our connectedness. And that can be a resource for us, you know, when we do go into fear or worry. And so just kind of taking that as, you know, where we're starting from, where we are today. Um, I've been sharing in recent weeks um, quite a bit around the two central practices that really are key to living happily, freely, joyfully, um, peacefully, whatever the circumstances, whatever the conditions. And the Buddha taught these two practices. One is to abandon what's unskillful. And that essentially is to just be aware of when we do get caught up in unskillful, unwholesome, painful mind states and see that we don't have to, that we can untangle ourselves from those. 
And I spoke last time about two practices around abandoning the unskillful. First, to prevent the unskillful states from arising in the first place. You know, so if we're feeling anxious, one thing that is very likely to trigger and expand and strengthen that anxiety is precisely to go and do things like, you know, read more and more about things that will make you anxious or read if you're prone to getting angry about things, going to listen to people and things that are going to reinforce that. So prevent the arising of those states by choosing, okay, I'm not going to incline my mind in that direction. And when and if and when they do arise, we can work with them and see that they're not really I or mine, that we can, if we meet them in a, in a wise and a skillful way, and see that they're not self, they're not permanent. Any of the emotions, any of the thoughts, any of the feelings are temporary energies, if you like, passing through. And if we don't get into a tangle, in a, into a struggle with them, then, then there isn't suffering. <clears throat> there isn't that sense of separation. There isn't that sense of... of, of um, there isn't the clinging, there isn't the separation, there isn't the suffering, you know. So we have those two practices for abandoning what is unskillful. And this is what we, we look at, we explore in meditation, and we can what we do in our daily lives as well. Notice when we are caught up in one of these states and see, okay, what am I noticing now? What am I believing now? What am I holding on to now? And can I let my grip soften and open right now and, and let go of whatever it is I'm, I'm holding on to, I'm, I'm getting in a struggle with right now. <clears throat> and the second of these practices, the Buddha said, <coughs> excuse me, is to, is to cultivate the good. You could say another way of saying this is to um, is to develop what is skillful mind state. So abandon unskillful ones, develop skillful ones, develop qualities, <coughs> attitudes, um, practices that will um, that will open our hearts, that will allow us to be present, that will allow us to feel connected and compassionate and grateful you know cultivating these 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 qualities these states and in recent weeks i've focused on that mainly in terms of inviting them to arise like a, in a practice of loving kindness we cultivate loving kindness we invite loving kindness to arise you know by perhaps by saying, you know, the words and phrases, may I be happy, may I be safe, that kind of thing, and then wishing the same of, of somebody else and ultimately including everybody in our, in our practice. And in that way, by inclining our mind towards loving kindness, that really becomes the quality of, almost becomes more the default quality of our mind. You know, just in the way that if we keep going to anger, anger is going to be the state that fills our, our mind, fills our consciousness. So we're choosing to incline the mind to cultivate these states, cultivate compassion, say, towards ourselves. You know, if we're feeling, we're feeling sad or we're feeling some painful emotion, to, to turn the compassion, to turn the kindness towards ourselves, recognizing this is hard. This is a hard time I'm, I'm going through right now. And not recreating a sense of uh, poor me, I don't mean that, but just to recognize that just as you care about somebody else, you know, if a child of yours or a good friend was, you know, going through a hard time, you would really want to be there for them. You know, if a child put your arm around them and say, you know, it's okay, you know, it's hard. I'm sorry that you're going through this right now. And we can do this for ourselves, but often it's hard to do it for ourselves because, you know, it's always, we tend to be kind of out there and we forget about ourselves. We forget to include ourselves. 
you know, so I've talked a good bit about cultivating these qualities, cultivating gratitude, you know, using that sometimes as an antidote to some of the more painful mind states, you know, if we're caught up in craving something to, to actually turn the spotlight around and say, okay, rather than focusing on what I'm lacking or what I'm needing or what I'm wanting that I don't have, what if I, what would happen if I turn my, my attention towards why, what I already have, what I'm grateful for? And I find it almost a kind of magical thing to be able to kind of get out of the fixation that something's missing, something's wrong, to, okay, right now, I could put my attention there, but I could also just recognize, okay, right now, you know, in the midst of all of this, you know, for many of us, you know, we, we see all around us things that can make us anxious or worried, but maybe in our own lives, you know, maybe we have resources that keep, you know, support us. We have loved ones, you know, around us to, you know, that we can be with or we can connect with in real, in real time or in person or online, virtually. Um, you know, we have, we have our practice, you know, we have our religious practice or spiritual practice. We have our health, you know, all of the things that we can come back to. So I focused a lot on, on the way we can cultivate these qualities. And today I just want to emphasize how much these qualities or cultivating the good, cultivating the skillful, <clears throat> is really an inherent part of just sitting down to meditate and um, you know we think when we meditate well okay I'm going to sit down and meditate and I'm going to practice mindfulness so you know we we bring awareness to our experience and that's you know that's what kind of mindfulness is you know watch what's coming up do the things that i've basically just been talking about but i sat down yesterday i i took some time for a, a I, I take saturdays most saturdays as a for a personal retreat and at least half of the day you know do practice either sometimes i do it with other people or sometimes i do it on my own and i thought okay what are the other qualities that are that are, are present you know that are really essential qualities of of mindfulness meditation and um and i came up with nine essential qualities and so i know not everyone <laughs> this is not a buddha list this is a hue list but it's very linked to the buddha's list you know but but it's just kind of reflecting on these today so I'm going to I'm going to share my screen with you <clears throat> and I'm going to open can you see that doc there <clears throat> yeah so what I've been talking about is um <clears throat> excuse me what I've been talking about is abandoning the unskillful and cultivating the good and here this is I won't read through all this just for time purposes but I'm going to share a link to a Dropbox if you would like this doc. So don't you know, don't worry about getting every word if you um, if you miss any pearls of wisdom. Um, but um, you know, abandon what's unskillful. And basically, the Buddha says, I you know you can do it. And if you if I didn't think you could do it, I wouldn't ask you to do it. And develop what's skillful again. If it was to cause harm to abandon to cultivate the good or develop what's skillful um, i wouldn't ask you to do it but because it leads to well-being and happiness i i say to you develop the good what's skillful cultivate the good so when we sit down to meditate as i was just saying we might think we're cultivating the quality the practice of mindfulness but you know we're just thinking about it and this may not probably isn't the full list but I think these other qualities are very much in, in our practice and really essential elements of, of, our, of our mindfulness practice. So the first and really a central one is this practice or this quality of bringing 
a non-judging awareness to whatever is present in the body, heart, and mind. You know, we talk, uh, you know, in the instructions about you know, just recognizing, noticing bodily sensations, noticing, you know, emotions that are present, noticing the mind, the thoughts in the mind, you know, what, what's present. And, and bringing a receptive awareness to what's here, recognizing what's here and allowing what's here to be, to be present, to come and go. But as well as mindfulness, another quality, which is very central in the Buddha's teachings, is concentration. Concentration, the focusing of the mind. You know, if we're typically, if we were just, you know, if we were new to meditation and we were just to sit down and close our eyes, the likelihood is that the mind would just kind of wander off and get into stories and memories and plans and daydreams and various things. So in order to <clears throat> really to train the mind to develop a quality of actually being present, it's really helpful to, to focus. And so it can be to focus on, on an object. And in meditation, there's many different objects, you know, whether it's the breath, the body, sounds, a mantra, a word or phrase that we might use. We could look at a candle. In other traditions, you'd use other, often use other focuses for attention. But they all have the same function of kind of gathering the attention, focusing the mind, um, and yeah, obviously bringing it back when, when we recognize that it's gone off. Um, and we can do that with an open awareness as well. So it doesn't have to be just one object. We could just let the attention be open as we sometimes do in meditation and just watch the passing, you know, the passing show of appearances. You know, there's an emotion, there's a sound, there's a thought, there's a feeling, you know, and we'll watch them come and go. You know, we kind of un, un, untangle the tangledness we have with it. With the, oh, I like this, but I don't like this. And maybe I like this a little bit. We say, okay, can it all just come and go? We also, so concentration, um, a quality that is really a powerful support is to build calm, to build tranquility, to cultivate tranquility. When the mind is very you know, agitated and unsettled, it's really hard to be mindful, it's hard to be present. So as we do often in the, med in the beginning, early in the meditation, just to take some deeper breaths can be a really powerful way of calming and settling the mind. And then as we, as we deepen into the practice, it can be a way of, um, of really cultivating wonderful states of mind, joyful, happy, peaceful states of mind, just by connecting with what, what, how that feels, how, how the body feels, you know, how peace feels in the body, how the breath, you know, feels a kind of a, a really um, pleasant feeling of the breath in the body, etc. So calm and tranquility are also wholesome, skillful qualities that we cultivate in meditation. A fourth quality that we, um, that we cultivate, and we, we don't necessarily have to kind of say, okay, I'm going to focus, I'm going to cultivate concentration now, or I'm going to cultivate calm, or we can do that. But these can be kind of almost running in the background, as it were, almost like programs running in the background. You know, sometimes we bring them into awareness. Let me focus my mind because it's all over the place. Or let me calm myself because I'm, I'm feeling restless or agitated. And really one of the you know, key elements of the practice is to cultivate wise effort. And I talked about this a couple of weeks ago you know, the four qualities of wise effort, maybe it was last week. Um, um, and, and basically what we're doing is we're cultivating a balanced effort, you know, a balanced use of our energy um, that we're, we're not, you know, tr holding on, you know, craving, tr you know, trying to hold on to something or to get somewhere where we're not in this tight, tense way. But we're also not kind of 
you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, whatever. We're making a skillful effort. So bringing energy into our practice in order to, de to develop the wholesome states and to abandon the unwholesome ones. And really, so effort as a fourth quality, a fifth one underpinning <clears throat> the whole of our effort and the whole of our intention our, and our practice is a wise understanding. Kind of having the, the sense, the knowing that this is helpful, this is beneficial. It's helpful for me to, to sit, to be present, because it moves me towards abandoning the unskillful. It, it, it moves me towards greater freedom. We wouldn't do this unless there was some level of wise understanding that this is a, a useful thing to do. This is a helpful thing to do in my life. Even if it's just a healthy skepticism, I've heard these good things about this mindfulness practice and I, I'm gonna give it a try. That's enough, that's enough of, a, of an understanding to be open-minded enough to give, to make an effort in this practice. But as we deepen into the practice, that wise understanding grows. And we see this really does help free the heart. Letting go a little, I see the possibility of letting go, letting go a lot. I see, oh, if I could let go in this way, maybe I could let go over here. If I could let go of my anger towards, you know, this person in my life, maybe I could let go of my anger towards this political figure, you know, and kind of, and, and see, oh yeah, what, how would I do that? Okay, I can do that. So we can deepen, develop our, our understanding. But even to kind of get in the door, we need some level of kind of a sense of, understanding the possibility of alleviating suffering and, and living more freely. So this is a really foundational, it's the first of the qualities or the elements of the Buddha's Eightfold Path. Part of wise, part of the wisdom component of the path is understanding, along with intention. You know, our intention, we're, we're driven along by our intention. What is our intention? We could define it in different ways or we could express it in different ways. You know, my intention is to just to be as present as I can be, you know, to notice what's arising, to accept what's coming up. Or my intention might be to a kind of on a larger scale might be to to really know freedom from suffering in my life, you know, to really move my life in that direction of of greater freedom. So knowing where we want to go, you know, as Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So we will end up someplace else. So knowing where we want to go and inclining our mind in that direction, the intention is how we kind of gather the energy of the effort and, uh, and gather our attention and kind of move it towards what we're, what our goal is you know, in the, in the more immediate sense or in the kind of larger scheme of, of where, we're, where we're wanting to go. And then another quality that we're cultivating is the quality of balance or equanimity. You know, when we talk about welcoming the guests, that's really the quality of equanimity. It's like seeing, okay, I don't have to differentiate between you know, the things that I like and the things that I don't want, whereby I hold on to the guests that I like and I kick out the door, the ones that I don't like. I can say, okay, what if I let the guests just come and do their thing? You know, if they want to have a party for a while, keep social distance um, and, and kind of have fun for a while, they can come and then stay. And if I'm not in a tangle with them, you know, if I'm not getting in a fight with the experience, then they, they just come and go. Because what keeps them going, as I've often, you know, you know reiterated, is, is the struggle in itself, our unwise relationship with our experience, the kind of getting in a fight, I hate you, I want you, the pulling and the pushing is what causes the suffering. So if we can let go of that pulling and pushing, and equanimity is a really important part of that practice, cultivating a balanced awareness and opening to the pleasant and the unpleasant. And then the quality of 
you know, you know, we come back to a lot, the quality of kindness, holding it all with kindness, holding our own experience with kindness, meeting it with friendliness, with, with, with loving kindness, with compassion, with self-compassion, compassion to others, compassion to ourselves. So cultivating friendliness towards oneself and, and, and our experience and to others. So that we're bringing all these qualities into this, you know, what we think of the simple practice of mindfulness. All of these, you know, I, 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 that, that, met, that image to me, that metaphor seems like a helpful one of just these programs running in the background. They're supporting the mindfulness, they're supporting the practice. <clears throat> and sometimes we can bring them into the foreground and say, okay, I think it's important to, to cultivate some kindness right now or cultivate equanimity or just really look at what our understanding is of our experience and where we're going or where our in intentions are taking us. And then finally, the quality of, of investigation, developing curiosity, interest in our experience. So when we're looking at our, our suffering, when we're looking at painful mind states that are coming up, one the a quality that we're bringing is a quality of investigation. We're looking at that and saying, okay, what am I holding on to right now? What am I clinging to? Okay, I'm wanting this. I'm wanting things to be a certain way. You know, if I'm anxious about the elections, for example, you say, okay, what am I noticing about this? What am I holding on to? And you might say, okay, I'm wanting this. I'm wanting this. And on the other side, almost always on the other side, there's a negative of it. I'm not wanting this, or I'm wanting this, I'm not wanting that to happen. Okay, what if I can just see that and, and let go of clinging to the wanting or the, or the aversion, and both of them, I can just say, okay, how about if I just accepted that things will unfold as they unfold? And I can do whatever I can in support of that process. And obviously, I would encourage everybody to do whatever we can in the next 60 days. But that's a different thing than the holding on in the mind to, I want this and I don't want that. You know, if we could, what would it be like if I let go of, I want this and I don't want that? I think what would naturally happen, what does naturally happen, is there's an almost a, a, a natural moving towards wanting to serve, wanting to help, wanting to care, but without this contracted energy. And so this is, this is the way really how things naturally unfold. If we let go of that holding, holding, clinging, then what naturally arises is a caring, an engagement, a wish to alleviate suffering, but coming from a very, very different energy, you know, that doesn't cause us suffering, that doesn't reproduce suffering in the world, you know, of like we're going in there with our, you know, you know, with our anger and our righteousness and all of that. And then we just create separation. We create division and we reproduce all of the suffering that we've seen so much in our, in our country in recent times, but in the, in, in, in history, in the history of, 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 of the country and the world, we just see how, holding on to views and opinions and we're right and they're wrong, um, you know, has created so much suffering, so, man, so much division, so many wars. And, and, and we can end that struggle in ourselves so that when we engage, we engage with, with our hearts open. And it's a practice. I'm not saying it's a simple turning of the key, you know, turning of the channel from, you know, being an angry activist to being a, you know, a compassionate activist. That's a, that's a practice, it's a training, but we can do this. <clears throat> we can move our, move our, in, <clears throat> move our intentions and our attention in that direction. So that's half a talk. Um, I wanted to get to the other half a talk, but we'll do that next week. Um, because I want to look at these, you know, having kind of, in a broad sense, framed these qualities that we cultivate. And I'd invite you to 
reflect on them. As I say, I'll share the Dropbox link or you copy down if they're helpful, just kind of note down these qualities. Um, all of these, all of these qualities really, and you know, there may be others, but I see these as very central ones. When we sit, we cultivate these qualities as needed and appropriate. And then we can turn our attention, and we do turn our attention, obviously, to what's present, particularly where, where there's suffering, where there's clinging, and working with that. And that's really the second part, asking ourselves, you know, what's in the way? Where am I stuck? What am I not seeing clearly? What, what's, what are the obstacles to being at peace, truly happy in this moment? So next week I'll, 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 I'll get to this and talk more about this, th this aspect of, of the going back to the abandoning the unskillful again and ways we work with hindrances or obstacles that arise in the mind. So what I'd, I'd, I'd do is I'll leave that here for, for now, uh, for today. Just let, leave you to reflect, if you like, on these qualities in your own practice. You know, it can be helpful to look at which of these do, um, do I pay attention to? Which of these are, are kind of more developed or that I'm more aware of, more paying attention to? Can I cultivate these qualities um, more in my practice? So I will stop the screen share right now, come back and... Um, invite us to come into a meditation, have an opening meditation. So let yourself arrive and settle in a comfortable, relaxed posture. You know, if you'd like to, and you like to do the meditation lying down, or some other posture, perfectly fine to do that. The main thing is, be in a position, a posture that's comfortable and relaxed, at ease. Take some moments to let your attention come into the body, drop down out of thinking. So I shared a lot of ideas and a lot of concepts. Consciously drop down into the body. out of the thinking mind and feeling, feeling your body, feeling the contact with the surface beneath you, with a chair or sofa or couch or wherever you are, the cushion. Close your eyes if that's helpful to you. And invite a sense of ease, of calm. One of the ways of deepening calm is to take some, some deeper breaths. The science shows, much, a lot of research shows that taking even one deep breath, a really full deep in breath, filling the chest and filling the lungs, and then taking a long slow out breath, making sure you empty the lungs as much as you can, fully emptying, releasing. That even one deep breath can help reset the, the nervous system, can help us relax, can help us come out of the, the fight or flight the sympathetic nervous system, into the parasympathetic, into the rest and digest, the, the more relaxed settling of the wing of the nervous system, autonomic nervous system. So if you like, take a few longer, deeper breaths. Let go till all of the breath has exhaled. Again, filling the chest, filling the lungs. Relaxing and letting go on the out breath.
calming the body, calming the mind. And notice what it feels like to do that. Does it help you settle? And sometimes it can, from a few moments, can increase the tension. You know, oh, I'm supposed to do this or this is supposed to happen. But relax as much as you can and just let the breath be a, a resource just to calm the body and the mind. And invite a smile, which can also help us to, to relax, sending a message to our brain and to our nervous system. We can be at ease, we can relax. you can, let the smile come into your heart. Let it drop down into the heart area, down into the body. Be a sense of warmth, sense of connection, thinking about somebody who easily makes you feel happy. Or just thinking about everybody here together in this call, in this class. Feeling the connection of community, of Sangha. Connecting with some things in your life that you feel grateful for. And letting yourself take in any feelings of, a, of appreciation, gratitude. Letting the breath, letting the body be as settled as it can be right now. And turn your attention to your experience. Just noticing as though you're kind of shifting the spotlight into the body and the mind and the heart. And just notice what's present right now. Be aware of what bodily sensations are present. And allow yourself to, to experience them. Let them come, let them go. Whatever emotions or moods or mind states are present. Maybe there's some relaxation, some ease, peace, or a sense of connection with yourself or with others. Or maybe there's some worry, some, some stress, or some fear. And see if you can meet whatever mood or emotions or mind states are present right now with, a, with an open heart, with kindness, with acceptance. Notice how the, how the mind is right now. Is it present? Is it calm and settled? 
or is it more busy and active? And just see, meet the mind where it is right now. Just noticing. So if you find yourself lost in a story or lost in thoughts, you can come back, but just notice, is the mind busy, active, agitated, or more calm, more settled, more at ease? Just bringing this quality of investigation or inquiry into just what's here right now. Being curious, being interested. and meeting whatever, whatever's here with kindness, with loving kindness, with friendliness, with compassion. Remembering why you're here why this matters, why it's important to you to practice, to, to cultivate these qualities, these practices, and having the intention to be as present as you can be. And making a wise effort to, to be here. to be present in a kind and non-judging way. Using your breathing to help focus your attention, if that's helpful. This is from Dana Ford's Walk Slowly. It only takes a reminder to breathe, a moment to be still, and just like that, something in me settles, softens, makes space for imperfection. The harsh voice of judgment drops to a whisper. And I remember again that life isn't a relay race, that we will all cross the finish line, that waking up to life is what we were born for. As many times as I forget, catch myself charging forward without even knowing where I'm going. That many times I can make the choice to stop, to breathe, to be and walk slowly into the mystery.
let's move to uh, to Emily. Um, and uh, would you like to lead us? Yes, thank you. So uh, I just like everyone to find your feet, standing up, allowing your feet and finding the balance between one foot and the other. And swing your arms just to feel the space around you. And then slow down, come to neutral, arms alongside, turn your palms up. And inhale and raise your arms, reaching up. And exhale, turn your palms out and down. And then inhale up, reaching up, cultivate the energy, gathering it in, gathering the sunlight and the sky and the stars beyond. And bring that energy to your heart. And gather the energy of the room, all the kindness and compassion here, our Sangha together and bring that energy to your heart. And then gather the energy of the earth, that which provides us so much, all of its abundance, and bring that energy to your heart. We'll start with going to the right three times using cactus arms. It's a good safe, safe way to twist. So breathing in, exhale to the right, inhale to center, exhale right, inhale center, exhale right and center. Exhale left and center. Left and center. And left and center. Float your arms down. Just doing a dance, rolling your shoulders, rolling them the other way. And again, Inhale, lift up, reaching up, grasp your right wrist. You might want to move your feet a little bit further apart. Inhale deeply and exhale to the left, reaching out, breathing in slightly. And exhale up. Switch hands. Inhale here. Exhale to the right, breathe in slightly, and exhale to the center. Float your arms down. And then gather your hands behind your back. Inhale in neutral, and exhale. Bring your shoulder blades together, lengthen your arms away, and release. Inhale, lengthen, and release. Inhale, lengthen, and release. Shake it up. All right, and last movement is a forward bend, placing your hands just above your knees. And deep inhale here. Exhale, allow gravity to have its way. Your body folds down at the hip crease, lowering down, working with your comfort level, pressing on your feet to relax all the rest of your body. Mm. 
and give one deep inhale here. Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> And then bring your hands above your knees. Press on your feet. And as you bring your hands to heart center, lift up, reaching up and release to the sky. Release to the Sangha and to the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Always lovely to come into the body and have you leading, leading us in movement. Thank you. And um, in a moment, we'll be going into our final meditation. And if you would like to um, share anything in the chat box of just what you noticed or what's come up for you, how you're heart is right now what's what's alive for you please feel free to to do that and um we shared um i shared during the 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 groups um the uh and link to the oh, the link to the uh talk you know the themes i was covering in the talk today and um, I'm going to share that again, or maybe Pat, if you could share that again. And um, also um, the name of the, the poem, that one was uh, Dana Folds, F-A-U-L-D-S, Dana, D-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, um, called Walk Slowly. And uh, Pat has been very gracious in recent weeks, i.e. about the last 27, most of those weeks sharing the uh, poems and the um you know kind of things that uh, that are worth sharing um you know to as references from the class and um so we will likely make those available as well so um let me just see i'm gonna this will work i think yeah so i'm i'm just posted the um the dropbox to the class today and the name of the poem and invite you to come into a comfortable posture Taking some moments to settle. Whatever helps you to arrive and settle, be comfortable being here. For me, almost always I'll begin a, a meditation with three to five long deep breaths just as a way of kind of letting the, letting everything going on around me and all the things I might be caught up in, letting them settle, come into the body, come into that relaxed wing of the body, the parasympathetic nervous system. Just connecting with a way that we're all familiar with of how we can, if just taking a, one or two longer, deeper breaths can help us settle, help us calm the body and the mind, relax. The smile is another resource. Helping us come into more into the heart come more, come out of the thinking mode where we spend so much of our, so much of our time out of reactivity. Gratitude, reflecting on gratitude can be another way of 
connecting with the wholesome qualities of heart and mind, appreciation for what we already have. Sometimes people begin a meditation with loving kindness or self-compassion. It could be wishing well to ourself, ourselves, or wishing well to others and to the world. May I be happy, may you be happy, etc. All of these are helpful resources, not always helpful. So we, we need to stay connected with what, what, what's going to be most, most helpful right now to settle, to arrive, to be here. And then we can invite an awareness that's receptive receiving whatever whatever's coming we spend so much time in a in a kind of doing mode going getting somewhere if we can relax and just receive receiving the sounds around us receiving the bodily sensations that come and go. Receiving the emotions and the mind states that come and go. A wave of tiredness. Feeling of restlessness. A sense of calm. Just all of these feelings, emotions, mind states coming and going. and not to get into a struggle with them. Not to hold on to the pleasant ones or push away the difficult or unpleasant ones. Not to have a, a feeling or emotion be fuel for a lot of proliferation, thoughts that create more thoughts. Staying as close as we can to the direct experience, <coughs> the feelings, sensations. Can we welcome the guests in Rumi's words? Can we make space for what's here?
is it possible to make space for whatever, whatever is arising, whatever is present, just letting it come, letting it be, making space for it with an attitude of kindness and acceptance. And then when it's ready to pass, letting it go. Our own breathing is always a a possible anchor for our attention, place where we rest the attention that we can come back to. In these final minutes of the meditation, you might take a moment to appreciate your own effort in in coming today and practicing today. All of the qualities that are expressed in, in just being here and practicing together qualities that we're developing that I spoke about of mindfulness and wise understanding and intention and compassion and investigation, effort. Equanimity. And feeling us all together here, held together in a field of of kindness. You might, with words or without words, just wish well to all of us here. That everyone be safe, healthy, free free from harm, free from suffering. Feel the way that you're held 
and each of us is held in community. Particularly as we go back into our lives and often feel alone and separated, and we can feel this, the energy, this connection with each other and with the wider community of all who, who are seeking to wake up and live more freely, create a more compassionate and caring world. You might envision taking all of this energy and the kindness and the wise intentions and understanding back into your own life, into, back into our, our world. You might see if there's an intention that you'd like to go go back into your daily life with. Ways in which you, or a way in which you might help in the healing of the suffering of the world. whether it's in your own life, in your own family, or workplace, community, or in the larger world, on the, in the political engagement world, whatever feels right for you. This is a poem by our dear friend Rumi, a Sufi poet from the 13th, I think, century. It's called Zero Circle. (coughs) Be helpless, dumbfounded, unable to say yes or no. Then a stretcher will come from grace to gather us up. We are too dull-eyed to see that beauty. If we say we can, we're lying. If we say no, we don't see it. That no will behead us and shut tight our window into spirit, onto spirit. So let us rather not be sure of anything beside ourselves, and only that. So... Miraculous beings come running to help. Crazed, lying in a zero circle, mute, we shall be saying finally with tremendous eloquence, lead us. When we have totally surrendered to that beauty, we shall be a mighty kindness. And just appreciating our connection here today and wishing that any benefits, any merit from our practice serve not just ourselves, but serve all beings everywhere. So it's a giving, a giving to the world of all of our practice today for the healing of suffering, for the well-being of, of all beings and, and the earth. May all beings be be free of harm, free of suffering. May all beings awaken to their true potential and their 
true goodness. So we'll um, share, before we finish, we'll share a few announcements of upcoming activities. And I'll just begin with a couple of things and I think hand it to Emily. Um, one, uh, I, one thing I have coming up is um, a half day retreat the last Saturday of this month. I'm going to be, it'll be co-sponsored through IMCW and the London mindfulness community or mindfulness project that'll be on uh, september 26th it's not on imcw yet but it should be in the next couple of days and um i also want to mention i i talked last week about my getting the challenge of talking to a large group of people on uh, insight timer and the sound not coming out and and I actually had the same experience during the week and I was sharing with Pat, but, but fortunately we worked it out this time and everything then went really well on Thursday. So I think we've solved the problem. But I'm going to have a four sessions coming up beginning next Sunday and it'll be before our class. It'll be from 9 to about 9.45 and it's called, I think, Freeing the Heart Through Mindfulness um, from 9.00 on Insight Timer. They're offering a lot of live sessions on there now. And so I've got the next four weeks. And I'm going to see how, though, how that goes. Um, it's a very, very large community and it's a lovely community as well, people around the world. So if you're interested in that, just check out the Insight Timer app. And um, the final thing is just more of a heads up is I'm, um, I'm going to be helping organize a um, a letter writing campaign. A lot of us are doing this individually, but we're we're going to do it as a letter writing retreat, where we get together for about an hour and a half on a Sunday afternoon, and we write hopefully about twenty letters, and they're all set for us to do. And you just put in a par personal paragraph or so, a few sentences about why you want to vote, and it's very broad. Obviously, it's directed towards people who don't vote all that regularly, but who we believe will support caring and compassionate government uh, and leadership. Um, and we'll do that the first Sunday of, um, of, uh, of the next month, which comes after September, which is called October. <laughs> the um, the uh, first Sunday of October, we'll do that, uh, do that. But I just want to give you a heads up about that. I hope to have, you know, 50 or more people doing that, get a thousand letters out there in a day out to, you know, you can choose the state you want to send it to, or if we all wanted to send it to the same state, if everything seemed like it was going to hang on one, I don't think that's going to be the case. But anyway, just a heads up on that. And also finally, just to mention, as I think almost everybody knows, there's no set charge for the class, but um, you are invited if you're able and you're inclined to, uh, get to send Dana through the various ways you can do that and Pat I think will share that um, share that in the chat box um, if you'd like to support me in uh, continuing to teach I'm really grateful for your support and uh, obviously to support IMCW and the Center for Mindful Living um, you know indirectly through the through the Dana as well 